iOS 16 just dropped for everybody, but it can be confusing and overwhelming to figure out where to start. So as someone who used the beta for a few months, I have a little bit of experience when it comes to working with iOS 16. So here are five things that you need to try immediately after downloading and updating to iOS 16. I'm Agent with Ardently Tech, and the first thing on my list is obviously the lock screen. That's the first thing I'm almost sure that everybody is going to be excited about because nothing has really changed with the lock screen until now since the iPhone was created. Honestly, half of my time using the iOS 16 beta has been messing around with the lock screen customizations. I honestly even have several of the same ones with different widgets. The widgets have been really cool. Most of them are just Apple. I'm not really sure if they're gonna be opening the widgets uh, to different third-party apps, but I would hope so because this is such a useful feature if you decide to use the widget functionality of the lock screen. Right now, the apps that have widgets functionality is the batteries app, the calendar app, clock, fitness, home, news, reminders, stocks, and weather. The one thing I do wish is that there was some sort of rotating widget, at least for like weather, for because some days I don't wanna just see the temperature, I wanna see the chance of rain, but if I don't have both of those up, uh, I have to like switch or actually open the app, which is not a huge deal, but having it at a glance or maybe some sort of smart rotating widget, just like they do on the home screen, would be really useful. I would love to see some sort of update like that in the future. But honestly, you can just set the weather lock screen and it gets a pretty cool idea of what the weather is outside right now. So it's pretty exciting to see all the different ways you can do it. You can have photos of your loved ones, rotating photos of your loved ones at the tap or at the hour. I have that as an option for my wife and my daughter. So I get like pictures of them throughout the day, things that I haven't, pictures I haven't seen in a while. And it's just really cool. Again, they have so many different customization options on there. This is one of the things that I'm sure everyone will be playing with. So play with it, take some time because it's a lot to take in and a lot to customize, but enjoy it because it's a really great, well-made feature with a lot of different customization, like even just the text of the, the, of the time and the date, that's also just such a great touch to the lock screen customization. So have fun with it, uh, take your time with it, and make as many as you want. But also make sure to make use of the ability to link it to a focus mode if you use focus modes. You might not use focus modes, but if you do, like myself, it's a really cool functionality to have different wallpapers show up for different focus modes. The next thing on my list that you need to try is dictation. Now I know not everybody uses the dictation mode on their phones, but as someone who does, I didn't realize how great of an upgrade this would be after I started using it. It did take some time to get used to it because I was so used to like speaking and then going back into typing after the speaking was done. But I, I always forget that, oh, I can just continue to talk and it will read whatever I need to say or you know whatever the case may be. I just didn't realize how much I was so used to the old way that it took me a little bit of time to get used to the new dictation model. And I think now I'm used to it and it's really great because there's words I can't spell. I have a really hard time spelling certain words and speaking it is sometimes a little bit easier than spelling it. As for new features, I feel like dictation is gonna fly under the radar, but it is such a great one, a great upgrade, so you definitely gotta try it out. The next feature you need to try is obviously the iMessaging, editing, and unsending. Now, before you do this, you gotta make sure that the person you're texting or trying this on is updated to iOS 16 as well, because otherwise it's gonna look like this. And if you do that, you might send a text message you're not actually wanting to send. And that's gonna be a little awkward if they're still rocking iOS 15. So just be careful and be mindful of that. Before I share my other must try features on iOS 16, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it so far and subscribe to our channel if you want more videos like this. The fourth feature you need to try is the lifting of subjects off of the photo. I, I don't know how to really make that any more clear, but I, they didn't really give it a name, but the ability to just press on a photo, a person on a photo, and it will literally peel it off like a sticker and you have a PNG image of that person and you can save it in your notes and then you can save it back into your camera roll and have a transparent background of that subject. So I used to have to download apps to be able to do this and use them for thumbnails, but now I can just use the Photos app to do that natively on iOS 16 and that's really exciting and I've used it several times for different thumbnails of ours. The one thing is it's a little tricky using it on live photos. If you use a live photo, you have to make sure you're pressing on the person if you wanna take them off of the background. But if you just wanna view the live photo, you just gotta make sure you're not pressing on the person or the person in the foreground of the photo. It's a little confusing, but you'll see it if you try it, you'll understand. If you don't use live photos, then you won't have this issue. This next feature is really exciting and really long overdue, but 
I'm just really glad it's here and it's the haptic feedback keyboard. If you're not familiar with haptic feedback, it's really just a small vibration or a small tapping of a screen of a hydraulic that makes it feel like you're actually tapping on a button. Uh, something I've been really hoping for on the native keyboard, but um, hasn't been around. I've been using the Google keyboard as a third party keyboard on the iPhone to be able to feel that haptic feedback. Now I can uninstall that and just use the native keyboard on the app. But the one thing is it's not on by default. So if you wanna turn it on, go to settings, search for haptics, and then the first thing you'll see is sounds and haptics. So click on that, and then you'll see keyboard feedback somewhere down in the middle of the screen there. Click on keyboard feedback and then just make sure to turn on haptics. If you don't want the sound, if you're a person who hates the clicky sound of, of the iPhone keyboard, you can turn it off here if you like that, but I enjoy the sound and the haptics. And I know people will hate that sound, but I do. And I love to keep my phone off of silent. So if you're gonna be around me, you won't hear that. That's me all day, baby. That's me all day. My wife hates it. Some other features that I'm still really excited about but didn't make it to this top five list is the shared uh, Safari tab groups that you can do with your friends. So say you're planning a trip and you want to save a bunch of tabs for all the different things you need to be aware of, you can just save those tabs in a Safari group and share those with your friends who are going with you on that trip or with your family or whatever you wanna do. There's some new accessibility features that I'm sure will go viral sometime soon as a secret feature you didn't know about on iPhone. But it's not really much of a secret. Another thing is share play and messages, being able to watch some videos and text a group chat as you guys watch the same video. That's gonna be really cool. I'm really excited to try that out. The medications feature, if you're someone who, or know someone who uses their iPhone often and needs to keep track of their medications, there's a new app that can do that. And it's also available on the new Apple Watches, which is really exciting. Um, as you get older, this becomes a little bit more um, convenient for those of you who take medications daily. Uh, so yeah, so that's also another really cool feature that I'm really excited about to see. And the fitness for iPhone, which is really cool because you don't need to have an Apple Watch to use it now, which is something that I feel like should have been a thing a long time ago. But those are the five things and some bonuses that I find really exciting about iOS 16 that you need to try right away, but there's so much more new things that you get to try and iOS 16 is gonna continue to be improving and, and becoming better. Um, it's gonna be a little glitchy at first, probably in the first. It has been pretty glitchy, the earlier betas, it has been, since then, been really smooth and I haven't had really much issues. So I figured it's gonna be pretty good, but a new software doesn't come without its flaws. Make sure to be patient. If you have any questions about iOS 16, you can drop them in the comments below, or you can watch this video right here, where Arnell and I talk about the best features of iOS 16 in depth, and maybe we answer it there. Enjoy that video, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.